All right, uh, this is, uh, I'm Alton Jinso, and I'm a civil engineer and public administrator. And uh, I've traveled around the world. I've been to amazing count of 34 countries. And I'm here to talk to you about my water bottle, which is the Kabasa, and why it is the world's ecological bottle par excellence, per excellence. Um, first of all, this is a bottle. And uh, I have here some seeds that came from inside the bottle. So this is a, a seed. So that's a technology. So um, the word eco, ecological, has been thrown around for a long time. And there's a lot of echo things. But what does it mean to be ecological? Um, what, what makes something echo? So I like to use Michael Pollan's definition of sustainability, which, which he says, uh, he wrote some books like um, The Omnivore's Dilemma, Dilemma in Defense of Food, among others. And his definition of sustainability is if I benefit from something, if I use something, does it uh, compromise the next generation's ability to do the same? If, if it does compromise, then it is not sustainable. However, if it does not compromise the next generation's ability to enjoy, in this case, this bottle, then it becomes sustainable. And I believe that the Kabasa, this water bottle, fits this definition and is, is ecological by nature. Um, so to begin with, this used to be a fruit, a calabash fruit. One of the names is African calabash. The scientific name is Lagenaria ciceraria. And um, so I hand drilled this hole, hand carved it, uh, with, uh, it smells like cinnamon. So I have uh, cinnamon sticks in here and I make some tea with it. Um, this is a sh used to uh, recycle the champagne cork that I uh, fit into here. And, um, and that's how I use it. So the, the kabasa is ecological, one, because it came from a seed. Um, and uh, in fact, this seed came from Africa. The, the, the Lagenaria ciceraria is native to Africa, but it has traveled around the world. It has gone to Asia, to India, to Indonesia. It has come to the New World, to Mexico, to Colombia, and to Brazil. And it's traveled so much that it has many names. For example, in Mexico, it's called Guaje. In Colombia, it's called Totamo. And in Brazil, it's called Cabasa, Moringa, Porongo. And, um, and that's why it's got many names, because it's traveled to many places. This, for example, uh, and it's used in many applications, like music. Um, in music, it's, uh, it has been used in, it's used in Berimbau, in Agbe. It is, uh, in India, you can make um, the sides of, uh, of a guitar. I believe it's called satir and uh, among other applications. You can also cut it, if you cut it along this, then you can turn it into a bowl, into a plate, into a cup, into a jar. So it's got many applications. And but for me, the most important one is this one, is to carry water. I can go hiking, I, I go traveling, I go walking in the city. Like right now, I'm in Sao Paulo, and this is my water bottle. Another reason why the Kabasa is ecological is because it's an insulating bottle. Uh, like a plastic bottle is going to be made with a technology called blow molding. That is, you get a tiny pellet, a tiny piece of plastic, and then you, you heat it up, and then you put it under pressure into a mold, and then it, it forms into a plastic bottle. That's how it's made, it's called blow molding. Uh, but this bottle, on the other hand, is just made by photosynthesis. You know, so photosynthesis is uh, nature, ph photosynthesizing light from the sun is what makes trees, what makes plants and algae. In fact, this bottle is made up of cellulose. 
Cellulose is an organic polymer, it's a biopolymer, the most abundant polymer on Earth. And the scientific formula for cellulose is carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and uh, nitrogen, or nitrate, uh, lowercase n. So this means that this bottle was made with atoms sequestered from the atmosphere, with hydrogen, with carbon atoms sequestered from the atmos atmosphere, hydrogen atoms sequestered from the atmosphere, and oxygen atoms sequestered from the atmosphere. So that's how this was made. It's a completely natural process. All that I had to do as an engineer and artisan is to hand carve, hand drill the hole and then fit a champagne cork into it. Why do I use champagne corks? Well, because this is the best cork to withstand the pressure. So after a couple months using this bottle, I realized that I was brewing something. I was brewing some drinks and then when I would go and open the bottle, it would pop like a champagne bottle. And why did that happen? Well, because I was fermenting drinks. So the kabasa allows you to ferment drinks. All I have to do is add sugar, add honey, and then the probiotic bacteria inside the kabasa will do all the fermenting process. Uh, we've, we've known about fermentation for a while. That's fermentation is what gives us beer, gives us yogurt and, and wine. So in the kabasa we can do all of those. Um, another really interesting thing about the kabasa is that um, it breathes. So there is an exchange of hot vapors. And the way that I found out about this breathing capability of the kabasa is this color. So uh, back in October of last year, I was traveling down the Amazon. I was in a ferry boat and um, I bought some acai berry juice. So acai berry is, has become famous in the US, but it's very common in the Brazilian, in the Amazon region. And um, before I had acai berry, I, it was not colored like this. The whole bottle was pretty much like this. But then after I had acai berry, I noticed this coloration. So this led me to believe that the kabasa was breathing, that there are tiny holes, which I'm calling micropores. So these micropores allow for the exchange of hot vapors. That uh, if you can hold the kabasa, like I'm holding it right now and, and it feels cold to the touch. And when I drink the water, the juice, whatever is in here, it's always colder than the room temperature. And, um, and then, so I know that the water is colder and I've seen this so then I can surmise, I can, I can uh, conclude that uh, there are micropores and that they're very tiny. It's not enough to, to, to leak water, so there's like no water dripping from it. But I know that uh, from this coloring, that some kabasa, some acai pigments, some acai like coloring, uh, was able to get to the outside of the cellulose skin. So that's what I'm calling micropores. And then the other uh, feature that I mentioned before was the fermentation process. It is able to take place because inside the kabasa shell there there are these grooves there are ridges uh, kind of like valleys if you look closely you can see that it's like a, a ridged surface uh, I've cut many of these on the inside and I can tell that it's like it's um, a little bit harsh to the touch and, and there's a texture and if you look at the um, the, the lining of our intestine, the small intestine or large intestine, you are going to see the same, like grooves, and that's where the bacteria get stored. If you don't want to play with bacteria, then you can just uh, add soap, you can just add boiling water, and then you're going to kill all the probiotic bacteria. That's how I sterilize the, the kabasa, that's how I wash it. But if you want, then you can ferment the bacteria, you can ferment whatever is inside and you can make uh, fermented juices, you can, ferm you can make uh, whatever juices you can think of.
Another really cool thing that I like to do uh, is to add uh, carbonated water, uh, sparkling water, and then mix it with fruits that I'm drinking that I have around with me. So this makes the this bottle like unique in its versatility, in its um, in its ability to to transport water. And I travel a lot. I'm always like I've been traveling through uh, Colombia, through Brazil, to Mexico, and I'm always under the sun. And I always have some cold water. And if I want to extend this cold water, then I can just leave the kabasa in the fridge or in the freezer the night before I go out. And it's going to stay even colder throughout the whole day. So uh, that's why I've been traveling with this bottle for two years now. And I believe it's the most ecological, it is the ecological bottle par excellence, per excellence. It is a nature's bottle. It's being used by ancestral peoples of the entire planet for thousands of years all around the world, in Asia, in Africa, in Europe, and in, in the Americas. So if you don't know about the Kabasa, I highly recommend that you learn more about it and that you get yours in my Etsy shop. And the way that I, I transport the Kabasa is uh, with a macrame strap. So I learned, I, thanks to my friends and family, I learned how to make macrame, which is a, a braiding technique also from Africa. And um, it's a very, um, it's an ancestral technique and it makes for a very strong and durable like uh, purse. I also added this uh, wooden ring so that I can hang it on the wall. And, um, and then, um, because the kabasa is pretty fragile, think of it as glass, you know, glass is lightweight, but then, but then if you drop it to the ground, it will crack. Same thing uh, with the kabasa. like it's, if you drop it to the ground, it will break. So in order to keep that from happening and always have it um, easy, like safely, and then I, I carry it like this. So that's how I transport, that's how I travel, and uh, that's how I am uh, selling the kabasa ecological bottle. And uh, it's sustainable, I believe it fits, it meets, Michael Pollan's uh, sustainability definition. It is ecological, it is an insulating bottle, and, and most of all, it comes from a seed. So every time I open to make a new bottle, I must um, like shake like hundreds of seeds from the inside, which then can then be planted to form the, to grow into the next batch of water bottles. So this is the definition of ecological, the definition of sustainability, and uh, I believe you should go out and get your own kabasa bottle from me at the Pachamama Warrior Shop. So thanks a lot, uh, it's been a pleasure, and uh, please let me know if you have any questions. I'm here to, to answer any questions that you have, and I look forward to speaking with you soon. Get your kabasa today from the Pachamama Warrior Shop. Cheers, greetings, saludos desde São Paulo, Brazil, take care.